is IHL really low? The legal nature of the rules regulating armed conflict has sometimes been called into question for several reasons. The main one is that it is claimed that it's frequently violated. This does not seem to be a good reason. As a matter of fact, states and armed groups often go to considerable lengths to adhere to rules of IHL. Many states take care to follow the legal instructions given by their legal advisors on the subject when conducting military operations. This will become clear as you listen to the interview with a legal advisor to the Belgian forces, Lieutenant Colonel Christian de Kock, at the end of chapter five of this course. Sometimes states even adopt stricter rules. It is, for example, the case of Belgium with respect to airstrikes against ISIL in Syria and Iraq. Belgian pilots are prohibited to cause any collateral damage to civilians even when such damage would be authorized under IHL. IHL is no more frequently violated than a number of other legal norms whose legal nature is uncontested. The, the problem is that in the field of armed conflicts, a single violation may have huge and disastrous consequences and often attracts media attention. Just think of the attacks directed against medical units in recent armed conflicts. This may give the false impression that IHL is ineffective. In addition, as a matter of principle, regular violations of a rule do not deprive it of its legal character. Take the example of national rules regulating the speed limit. They do not cease to be legal norms because they are frequently violated. More fundamentally, any legal norm implies that it may be violated, at least to some extent. The aim of a legal norm is to incite its addressees to adopt the behavior that it prescribes. It would be useless for a legal norm to prescribe a behavior which is always adopted and followed. Another criticism against the legal nature of IHL is that there is no sanction when it is violated. Again, this does not seem to be, to be true. It is true that there is no judicial mechanism specific to IHL to sanction violations of that law. But there are many other ways through which such violations are legally sanctioned, including through international criminal tribunals, the United Nations Sec Security Council, or the human rights bodies. In addition, there are not only legal sanctions. International disapproval by the world opinion may also be a form of sanction, putting pressure on the state to respect IHL. So why is it that we consider IHL law? The simple answer is that states accept it as such. When states are accused of violating IHL, like international law in general, they will not argue that the violated rule, for instance, the rule against targeting civilians, is not of legal nature. Most often, they will deny the facts by saying, we did not do what you said. They will invoke exceptions to the prohibition or give a particular legal interpretation of their conducts and state that it does not fall into the scope of the prohibition. 